Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daily Devotions with Vicar Brandon in for Pastor Steve as we wrap up the book of Exodus. We're finally in chapter 40 where we get to see this whole narrative come together and that God who rescued his people out of slavery in Egypt has now established a covenant with them, has now told them what to build in terms of what's necessary for their worship. The tabernacle has just been inspected, and so now we will see the glory of God being with the people in the tabernacle. And so this God who rescued his people comes to dwell with them. And so we start in chapter 40 as we wrap up the book of Exodus, this great story of God's liberation of his people Israel. 40 starting at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, on the first day of the tes- on the first day of the first month. Place the ark of the testimony in it, and shield the ark with the curtain. Bring in the table, and set out what belongs on it. Then bring in the lampstand, and set up its lamps. Place the gold altar of incense in front of the ark of the testimony, and put the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. And so all these different things that God had told them to make, God had told them how to make it, and finally they made it. It's all being put together. Place the altar of the burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the courtyard around it and put the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. Take the, take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings, and it will be holy. So it's all being set apart for sacred use for the worship of the true God, the God of Israel. Then anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar, and it will be most holy. Anoint the basin and its stand, and consecrate them. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting, and wash them with water. This idea of making them clean before they enter, kind of pointing forward towards baptism where God washes us with water in the word, forgiving our sins, bringing us into his family. Verse 13, Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments, anoint him and consecrate him, so he may serve me as priest. Bring his son and dress them in tunics. Anoint them just as you anointed their father, so they may serve me as priests. Their anointing will be to a priesthood that will continue for all generations to come. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he put the bases in place, erected the frames, inserted the crossbars, and set up the posts. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering over the tent as the Lord commanded him. He took the testimony and placed it in the ark, taking these ten commandments that God had given to him, putting these tablets into the ark of the covenant. Attach the poles to the ark and put the atonement cover over it. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle and hung the shielding curtain and shielded the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded him. Again, setting up this Holy of Holies. We remember how we talked about how in the temple, this was the same setup, the temple and the tabernacle, very similar. And how when Jesus died on Good Friday, that that curtain was torn in two, showing that God and man were no longer separated because of the sacrifice of Christ. Moses placed the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the curtain, and set out the bread on it before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. He placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. Moses placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the curtain and burned fragrant incense on it as the Lord commanded him. Again, time and time again, doing exactly as God instructed. Then he put up the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering near the entrance to the tabernacle 
the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offerings and grain offerings, as the Lord commanded him. He placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. And Moses and Aaron and his sons used it to wash their hands and feet. They washed whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar, as the Lord commanded Moses, making themselves clean as they approached the presence of a holy God. Then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Remember, God had been leading the people as a pillar of cloud by day and as fire by night. And so now God and his presence are going to dwell in this location, in the tabernacle, so the people can always know where he is with them and how to worship him. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Remember when Moses asked to see God, he could only see God's back, right? He couldn't see God's face, this holiness of the presence of God. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it was lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel during all their travels. And so in the midst of the people, they would see where the presence of God dwelt. And when God would move, so too would the people. They couldn't plan out long term where they were going to be because it was all up to the direction and the timing of the Lord. And just a reminder to us that we follow God where he leads, where he goes. And sometimes it takes us in unexpected places and places that we might not anticipate. And yet, throughout it all, God is present with us, and he is for us, just as he were, was for the people. And so, as we end this book of Exodus, remember that just as God rescued his people out of Egypt, out of slavery, so too our God has rescued us from slavery to sin, to death, and to the power of the devil. He's done all this through his son, just as they celebrated that Passover meal where the lamb was sacrificed, so too we celebrate that our Passover lamb, Jesus, has been sacrificed on the cross through his death, through his resurrection. And we too, we remember that in the meal of Holy Communion where we were to receive his true body, his true blood for our forgiveness. And so our God has liberated us from slavery to sin, and he has promised to bring us into the promised land of the new creation, that he's going to come back and make all things new. And in the meantime, as we wander, we follow where God leads, and we know that his presence is alongside of us every step of the way. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Join back to see Pastor Steve tomorrow and where he takes us next on Daily Devotions. God bless.